What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this Wednesday night, April 5th, 2023. It's about 8.35 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the uh, latest earthquake looks like a 6.0 here, well off the coast of South America region. Uh, coming in to the uh, earthquake 3D models as we speak. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet. So a uh, little behind, but uh, again, this just occurred uh, literally about 12 minutes or so ago, being reported by the EMSC model 6.0. Southern East Pacific rise at your typical defaulted depth there of 10 kilometers. And um, let's see here. The source parameters are provided by Germany. <clears throat> okay. Let me see if we got... Uh, any uh sign of that six pointer this is going to be the chile station here in south america now there's a little blip here of uh, potentially that earthquake again this occurred well off into the uh, pacific so you know obviously it may not show up as strong across the chile area but still a six pointer should show up at least a little bit i think it's going to be a little bit uh, less than the 6.0 magnitude but we'll see what the USGS wants to uh, state here. Once they get around to it, looking at the rest of the map until we wait, or while we're waiting, we'll look at the rest of the map here. West Coast activity. Still seeing some movement up here on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Let's see what we got going on here tonight. A couple smaller quakes uh, throughout the morning time period, it looks like. Uh, roughly between 10 and 26 kilometers deep here. Again, the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, let's check out the tremor map here tonight and see what we have going on. 210 epicenters, a slight uptick in tremor, but nothing, uh, definitely nothing like what we should be seeing here soon. As uh, far as uh, the cycle, the regular intervals here of uh, elevated uh, tremor uptick. So 210 epicenters around the Victoria area and also down here into the Southern California, or uh, Northern California and the Southern Oregon area could explain a little bit of the activity we're seeing here today upstream from that trimmer uh, not seeing any noticeable uptick here around the washington area things relatively quiet uh, except for the largest on the map a 1.5 explosion there uh, all other earthquake activity looks very minimal for now um let's see here i do want to check out the earthquakes canada map and see <clears throat> Where did it go? Where did, uh, oh, there we go. See what they're reporting up here for the, um, any type of earthquake activity up there. I'm not for sure what's going on here. Maybe it's just that window that's kind of open. Let me take a look here. Stand by for a second. Uh, I don't know. That's weird. Earthquakes Canada is not even working. Uh, there we go. It was a little slow for some oddball reason. Uh, as far as any newer earthquake activity up here, doesn't look like it. Most of this here is from uh, uh, in the week and uh, past couple weeks. There's some. Just wanted to double check. Sometimes we'll see some tremor activity up here uh, and um, a little bit of earthquake movement into the uh, plate boundaries up here, but doesn't look like anything's popping off there now. For now. Uh, let's see, Bay Area fairly quiet until you get down here along the southern end of the Calaveras Fault. And within that zone, that seen that 4.4 earthquake here a couple days ago in the um, Hollister area. A little movement here on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Mostly uh, smaller microquake activity. A look at the 2.5 map. Today shows that movement up here at the um, end of the um, Cascadia. One earthquake from yesterday near Tom's place. This is the Long Valley Super Volcano. Aside from that, nothing really above 2.5 here today into the California region. Although it is definitely still uh, somewhat elevated in earthquake uh, activity on somewhat of a broad scale here in the California area, stretching from Nevada all the way across the Garlock Fault Zone, where we're seeing mostly uh, some smaller microquake activity. Also up here north of the Reno and the Carson City area of Nevada, seeing a little slight uptick and some smaller quakes. 
A look at the Southern California area. Nothing major going on for now. Um, the San Andreas Fault sleeps for now, but uh, one day it will not be sleeping. It will make itself known. Just a matter of time. Uh, 2.4 off the um, San Jacinto Fault Zone. In the mix here with all these other smaller quakes. Uh, 2.0 in the Palomar Observatory, the latest quake here. 13 kilometers deep. Rest of the country, of course, um, out here around the um, oil pumping operations and wastewater disposal wells here of Texas and or uh, the um, Oklahoma area. Things have been somewhat active over the last 24 hours in that region. No major uptick here across the New Madrid seismic zone. Looks like we had a couple small earthquakes today uh, north of Dyers Dyersburg. Um, a 1.9 and a 1.5, a very small earthquake activity. And if you look at the last 30 days of movement out here in the New Madrid seismic zone, this is, you know, all the magnitudes as well, only shows about 22 earthquakes. But uh, these little events here, uh, as minor as they are, continue to tell us that that fault system here is still alive and no doubt will produce a big earthquake one of these days in that area as well. Almost seems like everywhere is overdue. We've been living in some quiet times here recently. Uh, a couple earthquakes around the Puerto Rico area, mostly, uh, well, looks like some threes, upper threes. And a 2.5. Anything, uh, nothing coming up yet from the uh, USGS. Latest earthquake map uploaded. Nothing, nothing uh, coming in yet. All right, let's see what we got for the South America region, mostly fours and threes across the area. Uh, including a 3.5 uh, more recent earthquake that does kind of make sense out here because these are divergent boundaries uh, where the six pointer struck and that is going to be um, roughly within let's see where are we at we're at that triple point area it seems like uh, so roughly within this zone right here now notice these arrows are pointing away from each other that is the oceanic uh, fault systems out there uh, spreading away from each other, creating uh, eventually new land out here. And that ultimately applies further pressure. When we see earthquake activity out here in this general area, the, notice the plates here. Notice these arrows pointing directly due east to the South America region. So 6.0 coming in just uh, within the last uh, 20 minutes. And we've already seen the noticeable uptick in uh, activity here across the Peru Chile Trench with that three pointer coming in. Uh, three pointer. 0.5 right to be exact right there uh let's see how deep that is about 32 kilometers deep so we'll watch this area uh you know with this elevated movement around south america we did see some deeper activity some larger scale adjustment now definitely keep an eye on that region 1.0 up into the california area it looks like uh, getting in on a little bit of adjustment as well um, goodness, New Zealand, I'm not for sure what's going on over there, but things are looking awfully quiet in your neck of the woods. Not a whole lot of activity popping off there uh, for the New Zealand area, but uh, we will check that out. I always do like to cover the New Zealand area because a lot of times the EMSC and the USGS fail to um, put out the uh, earthquake activity out here. There's always going to be earthquakes, folks, twos, ones, uh, but far as any major swarming goes i am not seeing it here across new zealand the earthquake drums will tell us the tale of facts and aside from those quakes there uh, earlier this morning late last night things are relatively qual uh, relatively calm across the area of new zealand all right uh further to the west here Double check, make sure we got everything. It updates it. What? Oh, goodness, that's <laughs> look what USGS is reporting that six pointer as a 5.1. That's almost one full downgrade there of that uh, magnitude. That is crazy. C crazy. Uh, let's see what they've reported here. Reviewed by a professional seismologist here. Uh, 10 kilometers deep. It is in an area that does see obviously quite a bit of activity. So a five-pointer, I, I kind of thought it may be a little bit smaller. Remember I noted this little blip here on the radar, well, the seismograph that is there in Chile, 
if that was a six pointer, definitely should have been picked up a little bit more. So that's probably appropriate downgrade, quite the downgrade. But then again, the EMSC model sometimes overblows things. Uh, looks like that adjustment has been made there with them as well. All right, uh, what else we got here? North America or the uh, Alaska area, a couple of earthquakes up here. Looks like a 3.5 around um, Port Hayden. Is that right? Or hidden? There along the Aleutian Trench, uh, some deeper movement quakes here across the Cook Inlet area today, it looks like. Uh, not seeing anything major popping off here in the Alaska area. No major swarms. One deeper movement quake here from, uh, let's see here, when was that? That was from today. Uh, it looks like earlier this evening, just a few hours ago or so. 501 kilometers here up in the Sea of Osk area. That is the Kurokamachaka Trench. Yes, it, that does go deep into the trench area. Further adding some strain up here, folks. We've been watching this area for some larger scale movement for quite some time. We did see um, we did see that 6.5, uh, making some further adjustment downstream, it looks like. Uh, but I don't think it's... Uh, the magnitudes there can get much larger than that, so we'll just continue to keep an eye on that. Either way, a little bit of elevated movement across the... Curl Kamachaka Trench here recently. All right, Earthquake uh, 3D Globe once again. Uh, general movement around the Philippines area looks somewhat elevated today, including a 5.2. And looks like a little movement here around our watch area, up around the uh, northern end of the Anima, Andaman Sea, the Myanmar area. All seeing uh, a slight uptick here, even though it's not showing it here on the USGS map. We're seeing a 4.6 and a 3.1. Mediterranean area in Turkey. Things are dying off here in the earthquake department for the Turkey area, which is good news for them. But uh, again, we can occasionally see some larger aftershocks months, if not years later. So we'll keep an eye on that area. Atlantic Ocean, calm and clear and quiet for now. What do we got going on here? 0.9 and 1.5. Looks like California wanting to kick up a little bit uh, following this adjustment down south. Uh, also there into Nevada. All right, folks, uh, space weather activity here. I know there's not a whole lot to chat about. We did have a little minor, a super minor sea flare. 55% chance for a sea flare, 10% chance for an M flare, X flare at 5% chance. And that is only due to this um, sunspot region here, 3270, which has shifted further to the southwestern limb of the sun here. We'll continue to watch that, though, while it's in view. Uh, the rest of the sun looks calm and not completely clear. There's obviously some sunspots, but all these are relatively stable. There is, however, a newer sunspot region way, way out on the southeastern limb. Too early to tell. I really can't uh, make out too much of what's going on here with the magnetic structure, which is this imagery here. Shows the different polarities in the uh, sunspots. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. That might be some good news there. Notice the solar ham site has noticed that as well. Um, auroras, sorry folks, not going to happen. Very minimal chance of the auroras. We're not really seeing anything major uh, happening on the sun. So the auroras will remain lowered for quite a while. Alrighty, um, let's see what else can we cover here real quick. Um, weather activity out here. Across the uh, west coast, we do have another storm system coming in here uh, tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow night, bringing with it some rain, mostly rain. There's some higher elevation snow, but this storm system here is a little bit warmer uh, than what we've seen here in the past. So a little bit of snow melting. Uh, either way, some further uh, precipitation there for Oregon, Washington, and Northern California. That includes here around the Chico, California area. And... Um, after that, the models here have not been um, put out yet. Uh, we can check out the previous run here and just kind of see what it uh, what it has way out in the forecast. Looks like a little bit of precip coming into the area, mo mostly around northern California, uh, northward into Oregon and Washington. Storm door, goodness, oh my gosh! I hope this rings rings true. I hope. I hope that this is going to be um, playing out. This is going to be the April 19th time frame. Actually, April 18th. 
uh, with that UTC date there, the Z time of 00. So roughly around Tuesday in the afternoon time period, that is quite the precipitation maker here with a massive low pressure system bringing in a substantial amount of rainfall. Uh, look at those accumulation rates there across the Sacramento Valley area. That's some heavy duty rainfall, folks. Um, that definitely create some flooding concerns if that rings true. So I'm hoping, definitely hoping that uh, pans out. I'll have to keep an eye on that, see if it changes. Again, this is way out into, you know, the April 18th, April 19th time period here. That's about two weeks from now, and these things are always subject to change. Uh, and more than likely, they probably will. But hey, I would love to uh, definitely see a substantial storm out here in the middle of April like that. That would be pretty awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite ready for the 90s and 100s that are coming this way. All right, uh, look at the rain accumulation uh, out here over the next... Um, what do we got going on here? A second, let's get back out of here. Get rid of that. That may allow the window. There we go. 10 days, next 10 days or so. Um, most of the rainfall up here around the Oregon coastline. This is excluding that storm system that's, you know, that I'm kind of excited about around the 18th time period. This only goes out about 10 days or so, but it still looks like we're going to get some wet conditions out here uh, around Chico with maybe an inch of rain or so. Uh, but up into Washington, Oregon, these guys are going to get hammered uh, with some further storm systems up there. The rest of the country. Um, I know the folks up there in Kansas and uh, western Oklahoma, Nebraska need some heavy-duty rainfall. I know there's they're in quite a bit of a drought, but uh, it doesn't look likely here, at least in the next 10 days, a little bit of precipitation up here through Kansas and into Nebraska, but most of the uh, substantial amount of rainfall going to be uh, limited there to the south and eastern Texas area. But i uh, kind of watch this and see how it plays out, folks. Alrighty, I uh, hope everyone has a good evening. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Take care, guys. Peace out.